For today's experiment I'm going to use a cast iron camshaft for melting stock but before I do I'm going to use a file and we'll see where the hard spots are. This is the journal file there now in the bottom of the cam lobe files there but on the top of the cam lobe it will not touch it this next test is to see whether it is made out of ductile iron or cast iron It is definitely cast iron because it broke into three pieces but now I'll have a close-up shot of the grain structure where the fracture is. Here is a close-up of the fracture surface. There might be just a little bit of chilling on the edge there but I'm going to make a sample casting and drill and tap it with a very small tap and we'll see how it works. Now I'm going to break the leftover ingot and see exactly what sort of chills in the iron. Here is the fracture from the ingot. It's perfectly grey all the way through, right through to the very edges here where it normally will chill. It's completely grey all the way through. This is the first bowl I'm going to knock out and see how it turned out. That's what I'll be drilling and tapping this little boss here to see how hard it is. Now I'll see just how soft that cast iron is. I'll have to drill the tapping hole. That looks okay, now we'll have to tap it out.
That's a five millimeter tap and it's very soft that cast iron. The cast iron drilled out nicely and tapped out, didn't break the tap. As you can see, I'll screw out the screw. The thread came out nice. The two moles you saw me pour after the first one are my fluidity test. Nothing special here, they both showed roughly the same distance but what is a little bit different is there's a bit of a taper between the ends and with aluminium it's got a nice rounded edge. But I'll ask the question, does ferrosilicon have its limitations? Well I'm about to find out. Because this test is such a small surface area it will cool down really fast and we'll see if the ferrosilicon made it soft enough to machine. The first test I'll do is with the file. It does file but it feels very hard. The second test I will try is to see if I can drill a hole through this test piece. It did drill through there, but I noticed it was a lot harder than normal. To answer my question about does ferrosilicon have limitations, yes it did drill through the test piece, but if you have a close look on the very edges there, it is getting just slightly mottled, so it has reached its limits. I decided to repeat the test, but this time in a thinner part of the test piece and it partially drilled the hole, I didn't think it was necessary to go all the way through but as you can see it's still grey all the way through. What all these tests show is that you can use a camshaft and melt it down in the home foundry and get usable machinable castings but you do need to add ferrosilicon.